I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm willing to work as hard as I can. There is no past, there's no future, there's just this moment right here. If I did that, if I can get through that, like, come at me. Changing how I saw myself, like, as a man, not just as, as an athlete. It's okay that I struggle. It's okay, that's part of the deal. It's how I respond to it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Limitless Athlete Podcast. I'm Tom Foxley, the founder of Mindset RX, a coaching service for athletes that focuses on the development of mindset to unleash athletic potential. Today, I want you to take home from this episode an understanding of how sleep works and how that affects your mindset and also what you can do about that. So essentially today, what we're going to do is cover fundamentals of sleep give you an understanding of why we go to sleep how sleep works what happens in different stages of sleep um brain waves associated with that and what actually happens when you're getting to sleep and then attach to that the both the mental health and the athletic mindset perspective on that and then wrap up with some general guidelines that i like to apply with my athletes um it's a kind of a starting point that we'll, we'll finish off with um so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna really dive into some of that stuff and develop a really good understanding of how to sleep better, how to improve your mindset through that, and then how to perform better because of that. I'm gonna caveat caveat this by saying I'm not a sleep scientist. I've done a lot of research into it, um, but I'm not the the kind of the be all and end all of uh, sleep research. There's a couple of resources that I'd recommend that you check out if you go if you want to go into deeper a, a deeper dive into this, which is the the Human Lab podcast. Um, he's done some Dr. Andrew Human has done some great podcasts on sleep as uh, as well as a bunch of other things, and also Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. Um, the two really good in depth guides, and a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today has come directly from that. But I really want to talk to you as a, as an athlete and how we can apply that. So let's start out with what actually happens in sleep. Now, as you drift off, you're going to go through essentially 90-ish minute cycles. And in these cycles, you'll go from phase one through four, back to one, all the way through to four. And that that will happen, that kind of, that transition from stages one, two, three, and four over 90 minutes or so, which means that you're you're typically around four, five, three, something like that, um, cycles per night of sleep. So we can break down these stages into REM, and non-REM sleep. Let's start with REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement. And this is typically where dreaming happens. And actually dreaming can happen at any stage of sleep, but it's the vast, vast majority of it happens in REM sleep. This is like, in terms of brain waves, this is very similar to waking consciousness brain waves. And um, your brain's in a very similar state but you're asleep obviously and your body actually goes into an almost what is a paralysis your um your muscles stop like working according to the commands of your brain aside from obviously your respiratory muscles your cardio respiratory muscles so your heart your lungs and everything associated or sorry your lungs aren't a muscle um but everything associated with the breathing part of what's happening and the heart rate part so it's obviously things would be bad so muscles apart from your eyes as well so your eyes stay awake um, or stay awake your eyes um, stay moving around um, and that's why where REM gets its its name from a rapid eye movement sleep because as you dream your eyes flicker from side to side and if I look behind me he's not asleep um, but my puppy there he is chewing away but when he is asleep you can see his eyes are twitching too when he is dreaming so that's REM sleep um as the night goes in, goes on, you will prioritize much more REM sleep. So your initial priority is deep sleep, which we'll get to in a second. But as the night goes on, you spend more and more time in REM sleep. And then let's get to non-REM sleep. REM sleep is actually also known as stage four sleep, but non-REM sleep 
consists of three stages, stage one, stage two, stage three. Stage one is basically your dozing. Um, you barely spend any time here if you've got good sleep practice and hygiene. Stage two is when you start to deepen this um, relaxation, your muscles begin to relax, your breathing and your heart rate slows down, and pretty much half of your sleep is spent here. And stage three, in terms of athletic development, is kind of the golden zone. Um, you really want to get here for the physical recovery. At this point, um, it's also called delta sleep and slow wave sleep, but at this point, everything slows down your pulse your breath and your muscle tone diminishes too so you have less even less tension in in your in your body this is where your body really recovers and grows from training your immune system is enhanced um, and also there's links to creativity insight memory and if your rem sleep is met your body is going to also, the need for your REM sleep is met. Your body is going to prioritize deep sleep. This is really, really important for your body. Um, and what's happening here is essentially your brain waves are slowing down, or you actually have all different types of brain waves happening, which is kind of an electrical signal produced by the brain's activities. And you're experiencing them all, all the time. But like I said, in, in REM or stage four, it's very similar kind of if you were to put electrodes all over your, your scalp as you were um, sleeping, you would, like, in REM sleep, the, the the signals given off would be very, very similar to daily waking consciousness. But in stages one through three, your brainwaves start off being dominated by, like, alpha and theta, so it's like somebody who's very relaxed and awake, all the way into delta waves, which are far slower, like kind of longer, slower pulses. And this is the kind of transition that your your brain makes as, as you go through sleep. The interesting thing here is that if I deprive you of sleep for one night and then allow you to sleep uninterrupted, you are going to prioritize REM sleep. So initially it was like the stage three or slow wave sleep or delta sleep was seen as the only goal in sleep to get you to that deep sleep state what actually needed to happen though or what the actual realization here was the rem sleep is really really important so if you so if i was going to say nope you cannot sleep and keep you up and maybe let you sleep for 90 minutes overnight and then the next night say you'll get you like you can go straight to sleep your body won't go into the traditional sleeping like kind of process it won't go through stages one through three and then spend most of the time in deep sleep it will actually prioritize that rem sleep and the reason why is that rem sleep it helps balance out and process emotional information so anything that you did during the day that has that emotional salience or is was difficult or had emotional kind of charge to it your brain wants to process that to extract what's useful from it and to help you learn to help you better adapt to the world um, and to kind of maybe make help you make sense of the world and this helps you balance mood so if you're not getting enough sleep your body's desperately trying to get this rem sleep because it's so so important and usually it doesn't catch up with it um and then it goes back into deep wave sleep and that kind of process continues if you don't get the sleep you need, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to consolidate positive emotional content. And what that means is you're going to have a more negative lens on the world. You're going to have um, your stories, your non-serving stories are going to be far more sticky. And all those kind of old patterns of behavior that you thought you got rid of, they're more likely to come back when you miss out on REM sleep. And this is a really long lasting effect. Like if you continually do this, you're going to really struggle with, with your mindset. So it, it pays dividends to sleep well. It really pays dividends to sleep well. So how does the body actually get to sleep? What's the process and what are the triggers to get to sleep? There's four things that I like to modulate with our athletes when we're working with them. One of them is circadian rhythm. So this is essentially the the cycle that your body goes through. It's your body's natural internal clock that 
predicts sleep and encourages sleep and also predicts and encourages wakefulness. The key here is that your body thrives on routine. It loves consistency. The more you can get to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time, the more your body is going to love you for it. So the first step really is, is identifying that, that rhythm. And if you're changing your rhythm of sleep all around, and if you're going here and there and kind of um, kind of messing around with your rhythm, especially at the weekends, we need to get that sorted. Second thing is heat. Your body's temperature actually starts to drop and get towards what's known as the temperature minimum. So the minimum body, uh, min minimum temperature that your body gets to as you go to sleep. And we want that low body temperature to encourage sleep. So if you're really hot, you, if you do like, um, if you work out just before bed, that can, there's a whole load of um, obviously hormonal things that come up there. But one of the side effects of that is your body generates heat. And as you generate heat, that makes you less likely to go to sleep. So you can use this in the morning because if you want to be awake, um, you can go out, go for a run, do some fitness, do some training, and that will generate wakefulness and it will um, spike that kind of mood and alertness. But if you want to get um, if you if you want to get to sleep, start thinking about bringing the temperature down. Then um, caffeine. Caffeine is the big one. Um, it was previously. It was previously my downfall for a long time to sleep. I'd have caffeine way too late. I would um, have too many cups of coffee per day. And caffeine, essentially, there's, uh, I think, a, a neurochemical. I think that's probably the best way to say it. And um, adenosine, which is the the molecule responsible for making you sleepy. And that binds to something called adenosine receptors in the brain. And as those by as the adenosine binds the receptors that's what makes you feel sleepy the way caffeine works is it kind of blocks off those receptors so it stops them um it stops them receiving that adenosine and that works for a long time it's it works for a hell of a long time really it sticks around your body caffeine sticks around your body for around 12 hours or so but what happens when you um eventually wear off you get this flood of adenosine and that just flushes through your body and crushes you so what we need to do in that situation um, is limit our caffeine we don't want much caffeine around um, when we're going to sleep so that's something to pay a play around with and then the most obvious trigger for getting sleep light how much light are you experiencing like first thing in the morning your body wants natural light getting outside away from um like kind of glass protecting you and getting outside into into nature or getting outside just walking around and that's going to trigger alertness and similarly li uh, limiting that artificial light before bed is really going to help so what does athletic and um, so what happens with your athletic mindset because we've done the mental health side of things which is rem is going to help you process emotional information to help you balance your mood and there's been demonstrated links to depression and anxiety and bipolar disorder and so many other conditions if you're not getting enough sleep um what does it do for your athletic mindset well mental toughness is diminished hugely if you're not getting enough sleep and this kind of makes sense if you think about if i was to deprive you of loads of sleep for a night and then i was going to say i want you to do this extremely tough test you're just not going to have that great you're not going to have that willpower and determination and ability to push to your limits compared to if you've slept properly and that exacerbated over well that exacerbated over a period of two weeks or a month or a lifetime that gets um, severely limited. Like I can think back to the times when I was in the military and that sleep deprivation is the, the biggest drain on your mental toughness. So like the first, the first night of going to the field, you're like really alert. You're, you can put up with loads of shit. And then as you get tired um, and you start missing out on sleep and you're sleeping for like an hour here and there, like throughout the day, like or you're getting an hour of sleep um per day like it, it really screws with your mental toughness but also it, it screws with your clear thinking your decision making your ability to learn your ability to adapt and that mental stability and emotional regulation as well like if i also think back to those times when i was in the military and you see people snap or they just have this kind of meltdown of emotions it's always when they're, they're sleep deprived it's uh, such a brutal thing to be doing to human beings obviously very necessary in that in that line of work but that mental stability that emotional regulation 
it is a key part of why we need to sleep as athletes. Like if you want to become a better athlete, if you want to step into your potential, if you want to stop limiting yourself and falling into those self-sabotage patterns, we need to prioritize sleep. We need to give ourselves more high quality sleep. And then we have things like the physical side of things like reaction times as well. Reaction times drop off hugely if we don't get enough sleep. So guidelines. These are what you should be aiming for 80% of the time. You're not going to get it 100% of the time, and that's absolutely fine. In fact, I think it's um, that perfectionism around sleep is, is a huge problem that we face. But 80% of the time, if you're hitting seven and a half to eight and a half hours plus one hour for each training session that you run, you're in a really good place for mindset training um, and a really good place for your sleep and a really good place for developing your mindset. The next step is to establish a regular wake and bedtime. So those are kind of linked up. So think about typically eight and a half hours um, in the night, like people don't need four hours. Um, there's there's um, a lot of people say they need four hours sleep and they don't. They just don't know what having adequate sleep really feels like. So Give yourself seven and a half to eight and a half hours per night with regular wake and bedtimes. Then we're thinking about how can I trigger that sleepiness better and how can I trigger wakefulness better when I wake up in the morning? Get outside within one hour of waking and walk around for five to 10 minutes if it's sunny, 10 to 20 minutes if it's cloudy, like it seems to be perpetually in the UK at the moment. Um, and get outside, no sunglasses. Me looking out through a window right now doesn't count. Um, get outside and without kind of protection. Eyeglasses are fine. Um, sunglasses don't help, but eyeglasses, your stand eyeglasses are absolutely fine. We don't want you bumping into things as you walk around. So get outside within one hour of waking, um, eliminating caffeine between nine and 12 hours before bedtime, limiting alcohol and cannabis and whatever other kind of, um, those are the two main substances to limit. Um, alcohol, and ca um, alcohol and cannabis, they don't help sleep at all. They actually just make you more likely to fall into a pattern of pretty much unconsciousness. And then finally temperature, play around with temperature too. So make sure your bedroom's cool so that when you go in there, I think it's around 14 degrees Celsius, 16 degrees Celsius, something like that is optimal. Um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but you guys can figure that out. Um, it's pretty chilly. It's like you, you basically want it too cold to walk around naked. And that's a, that's a good rule of thumb. Um, and then blankets and stuff and layer up. And it's fine to be warm when you're in bed, but you want it you want it cool enough that you don't really want to put your hands outside of the covers. That's why you can't sleep on a summer night. Your body wants to have a cool temperature. Um, so play around with temperature, see what you can modulate with it. And um, also the, the kind of one way I thought, oh yeah, you can hack this is by making your body um, body temperature cool. And by, I thought I, I can jump into an ice bath or jump into a cold shower and that's going to help my body temperature does. And yes, uh, drop. And yes, it does initially. But what happens after that is your internal furnace kind of kicks in and your body starts to generate heat. And then it actually goes into overdrive and makes you too warm to sleep. So actually a nice warm bath about half an hour to 45 minutes before sleep is the best way to like get that body hot and then begin its cooling down. And that is going to really help. So hopefully that was some sleep guidelines. If you have any questions about sleep, shoot me a message. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Tom Foxley, T-O-M-F-O-X-L-E-Y. Or you can find us on um, Instagram through our business page, Mindset Rx, which is Mindset RxD. Hopefully that was useful. I'd love to hear what else you need to know about for your mindset because I'd love to provide the service to you. So shoot me a message, um, keep me updated and I shall speak to you all very soon. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe and like and share the podcast too.